Even in the best of times, the friendly confines is where we come to escape. Friends, family, and strangers leave the real world behind in favor of life's simple pleasures. Sunshine and fresh air, a well-turned double play, the perfect combination of hot dog and cold beer. The joy of the game makes us feel part of something bigger, and it brings us together as one team. This sense of connection is missing more than ever, and fans aren't the only ones craving it. So after months of a baseball shutdown and social lockdown, here's how the Cubs are keeping the team together even while apart. Baseball season is often referred to as a grind. With 162 games across six months, constant flights in and out of time zones, a new hotel in every city, and pressure to win nearly every day, it's normal for ball players to feel exhausted. Yet this year, players are experiencing a much different grind at home, getting through quarantine. I had no idea how long we would be home, how long you know, we wouldn't be playing baseball. And quite frankly, we just had no idea how bad this virus was going to affect the country and affect the world. Jason Hayward is one of the leaders in the clubhouse. Back in early March, he felt optimistic about the outlook for the season. As far as the team goes, man, we were having a great time. We were having a lot of fun. We had fire in our eyes and with the new vibe with Rossi, there's just so many positive things flowing, you know, when, when you talk about being that close to starting the season. Instead, baseball was abruptly shut down and ball players sent home. For veterans like Hayward and Daniel Descalzo, it's been strange to spend spring away from the game. I can't remember the last time that I haven't been at a baseball field, you know, over spring break or in April, you know, since probably I was like 10 or 11, you know, even then I probably had some sort of games. You can either, you know, sit around and feel sorry for yourself or you can try to make the most of it. And the guys that with young families, guys with kids, I think they're using this time to just be more involved in their lives than we normally could be. Quarantined in Arizona, Descalzo has whiled away the weeks as a stay-at-home dad with his three-year-old daughter and one-year-old son. The thing about the three-year-old and one-year-old is they have endless energy. Before you know it, you look up, it's time to make them dinner, and you put them to bed, and you're like, wow, where did the day go? Hey, Emmy, what are we doing? Last year during the season, my daughter really started to pick up on, you know, I'm leaving for a road trip or going to the field, and she she dropped the, Daddy, don't go to the field today. Don't go to work today. Um, so I think, you know, she's really enjoying um, having me around more. Throughout the shutdown, Cubs players have learned to balance their family lives while establishing work routines from home. In a time like this, you search for things to remind you of maybe your purpose, it may be your joy, it may be your outlet. So it's just great to have someone like Rizzo say, hey guys, you know, let's, let's get on a video chat and see each other's faces. I think this um, is an interesting time to be part of a team. You know, we've all gone our separate ways and we're still trying to, you know, maintain some sort of connection and focus towards the season, but doing it on our own. But the team is hopeful they'll soon be back together in the clubhouse and on the field. After watching the Last Dance documentary about the final championship season for the Jordan era Bulls, Cubs players have been reflecting on their own run together, which they know could soon come to an end. We've already you know, seen you know, some of the changes in, in coaching staff and not just starting with Rossi this year. You know, that's kind of happened since 2016. The business side of the game has definitely you know, rearranged the clubhouse. We're not looking at it as, in any way as something that we're sad about or you know, ashamed of or, or pissed off about. We're hungry. We want to take on another challenge. Coming up, the friendly confines becomes a food pantry. 
next on Cubs 162. Wrigley Field is not just a ballpark, but also the heart of a neighborhood. And amid stay-at-home orders and a growing economic crisis, the neighborhood has been suffering. Few have seen the impact like local charity Lakeview Pantry. Located just three blocks from Wrigley Field, the pantry has been serving those struggling from hunger for 50 years. When we saw that COVID was going to be an issue here in the Lakeview community, we knew it would impact our clients. And we said, more people are gonna need services than ever before. The pantry needed to expand to keep up with the increased demand for food assistance. But doing so would require a large space where volunteers could be socially distant while working. We looked at you know, school, gyms, and cafeterias, and someone said, well, what about Wrigley? There's nothing going on there. What do you think? And we said, well, why not ask? We have had a relationship with Lakeview Pantry for almost 25 years. They are our neighborhood pantry. When this pandemic struck, their executive director asked us if we would be open to converting Wrigley Field into a packing and distribution place for them. Cubs Charity is like, this is what we do. You know, we are part of um, community efforts all year round. And the biggest need that we know we could be of service was in food insecurity. By mid-April, Wrigley Field had transformed into Lakeview Pantry's newest satellite location. The friendly confines is now a food pantry, with Drew Moran running operations. Never in my wildest dreams did I think that I would be turning Wrigley Field into an emergency distribution center. Sarah, and Sarah and Amy, I'm gonna put both of them on dry. to dry. It has been incredibly eye-opening. Hi, Deborah. Deborah. Volunteers have been coming to Wrigley Field six days a week to pack food for people in need. All right, get this party started. Welcome to Wrigley Field. Good to see you. My name is Drew Moran. I'm our Director of Innovation, and I am so glad to have you here today. We see about anywhere between 60 and 90 volunteers coming through here any given day. I already see a lot of familiar sets of eyes in the house. Who's back? There's a Chicago spirit here, people stepping up to help. And lastly, if you've been to Wrigley before, you know we can't see your face. How do we smile here at Wrigley? All right, you ready to get started? And they're off, thank you everybody. Each day, upwards of 2,000 boxes of produce, dry goods, dairy, and frozen foods are assembled by the team of volunteers. Just having a sense of connection to the people around you, where people can address a need and find purpose, I really think that's everything. Dairy, my dairy queens. There's also just a sense of excitement about being at Wrigley Field. I told my brother we were going to be at Wrigley Field. He's like a huge Cubs fan. He was like, I mean, I know people miss the sport, and it gives people a sense of connection to what they're missing, and it gives them a purpose. I came home because of the coronavirus, and I've been working at home, and I really just felt like I needed to be doing something. It's cool to be part of something special in Chicago. While the concourse may be a strange backdrop for food packaging, the ballpark is surprisingly well suited to its new role. The infrastructure is here in so many ways, right? There's big coolers, there's freezers, there's garbage disposal. There were so many things that we didn't have to think about. Even the visitor's bullpen is a capable storeroom for shelf-stable food. Looking for beef stew in the bullpen at Wrigley Field is like a crazy dream you wake up from, and you're like, what just happened? Wrigley Field is also serving as a distribution site. Twice a week, up to 350 families come here to take home a month's worth of food. Hi there, how are you today? Good, thank you, you. This is not just serving Lakeview. Over 40 zip codes are coming all the way to Wrigley Field to access food because the need is so great. Most of the families that I'm talking to never thought that they were going to be food insecure, but with, you know, very little reserves, this is what they have to do. We're almost at 200% increase in services provided than we were before COVID started. 
So this partnership with the Cubs has really allowed us to expand, has allowed us to do it in a safe way, and that is very special. Wonderful! Good morning! How are you guys today? There's a spirit of community and connection in sports. People need that more than ever, and when people come to the pantry for food, the first and most important thing is that they receive a smile, or at least an eye smile. <laughs> While we never thought of Wrigley Field as a packing and distribution place, we do think of Wrigley Field as a place of hope and a place of inspiration. The opportunity to have Lakeview Food Pantry be hosted here at Wrigley Field has been an incredible honor for us. It's going to take a couple of years at least to heal from this, and so I know that we're going to continue to be of service for our communities. Coming up on Cubs 162, how minor leaguers are persevering through the pandemic. While the coronavirus has jeopardized the 2020 season, its impact extends well beyond the major league roster. One challenge for the Cubs front office has been ensuring player development continues while playing isn't possible. Whether or not this becomes a lost season in terms of like playing games on the field, it doesn't have to be a lost season developmentally. And so, you know, we needed to kind of bridge the work that we had been doing together in Arizona with what guys could uh, take on remotely. And, and that offered a ton of unique challenges. After 12 major league seasons as a reliever, Craig Breslow joined the Cubs front office in 2019. He leads minor league pitching development which has been hugely disrupted by the global pandemic. Depending on where you potentially live, what uh, you know, local restrictions are in place, um, guys face a, a, a ton of hurdles to, to just be able to go outside and throw baseball. Um, and I don't, I don't think that I can articulate that nearly as well as the videos right, uh, that, that have been submitted by, by guys throughout the world. Hey guys, it's Matt Swarmer here. I hope you guys are all doing well. Hola, mi nombre es Luis Devers. Vivo aquí en Limón de Samana. I'm coming to you right now from outside Boston, Massachusetts. To assess each pitcher's resources, Craig asked them to submit home movies of how they're trading through the pandemic. As the videos filtered in, Craig was amazed by what he saw. The ingenuity and the innovation uh, and the commitment that these guys have taken on is, is truly remarkable. This is a pitching that I purchased as I don't have a catcher to throw to, so it's been a good substitute. <laughs> Got the bands, Jaeger bands out here on the light pole, so hopefully that thing doesn't fall down. Across the U.S., Latin America, South America, and Europe, Cubs pitchers are going to great lengths to continue their training. I have a little pitching mound, and down there, if you can see, is a strike zone thing and like a net to carry it. We've got guys that are building their own mounds, uh, pouring concrete, guys that are throwing into bales of hay if they have access to a farm. Now, if this isn't some minor league ingenuity, big bucket, big old clay pot over there, tamping with a sledgehammer, throwing against the fence. It's really been incredible. Um, you know, it's kind of like instinctually, uh, guys are just committed to figuring out a way to get better. No Cub symbolizes this commitment quite like Matteo Bocchi in Italy. After playing college ball at the University of Texas, Matteo signed with the Cubs last summer. He was one day from leaving Italy for his first spring training when the coronavirus derailed his plans. I'm from Parma. It's a city close to Milan in the north. It's a pretty tough time for the entire world, but for our nation, it's it was really bad. During the COVID pandemic, Italy has suffered the third highest death toll of any country in the world. And it was the first European nation to impose lockdown. Mateo's region has been one of the hardest hit by the virus. When the complete lockdown was put down, uh, like I didn't have nobody to throw away. I didn't have weights, I didn't have anything. But Mateo didn't let that stop him. 
Hey guys, here's Matteo Bocchi from Parma, Italy and today I'm gonna show you how I'm working out and staying in shape during the quarantine. Let's check it out. So the first thing I came up with is to sew a rope on a blanket that I will attach to the trees and that's gonna be my throwing partner today. Okay, we're almost done crafting the towel. With the help of his mother, Matteo sewed an old blanket to a rope and tied it between two trees in his apartment's backyard so he could continue his throwing program. All right, now we're done throwing. It's time to hit the gym. And Matteo has continued his strength training thanks to his father, a heavy machine worker at a local pasta factory. Matteo's dad stayed late after work to build Matteo a home gym, complete with a custom-made barbell and weights. We have some weights dumbbells, strike zone, some bands, and this was all made by my dad. Thank you, dad. My parents, like, they, they supported me the entire, my entire life. They were always like, this is your dream, go for it. It's amazing, like, I feel like I have the best facility in uh, Italy right now. All right, done for the day. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed it. The Cubs front office continues to embrace the best technology, data, and resources to help their players develop. But during this time when the most basic activity of playing catch is a challenge, players are still finding a way to improve. I was just so struck by uh, this commitment um, and, and creativity, and I thought that uh, there would be a time where we would look back on this and say, wow, you know, like you look at the, what guys were forced to do and the way that they were able to take steps forward um, during a pretty frightening time, um, and it's something that we can be, be proud of, and I'm just not sure how you can watch that and not kind of be struck by it. Coming up. Of the Cubs are preparing themselves for a potentially shortened season. As spring turns to summer, the Cubs are hopeful that the 2020 season may finally bloom. The more we see, you know, that there's you know, a reality of having a season this year, the more anxious we get, the more excited we get about it, and, and just happy to you know, have an opportunity to be around this group that we've been through so many things together with and, and give it another shot. Players are already preparing themselves for rule changes that could impact how the game is played and the season unfolds. Whenever we do start playing and whatever the season looks like, it's gonna be nothing like we've ever seen before. And I think adaptability is gonna be huge for us. Every game is gonna be more meaningful. Thinking of a shortened season, there's gonna be maybe more hype I guess from the player perspective, knowing that each game carries more weight. Changes on the table include expanding the roster to 30 players, scheduling more double headers, and using a universal DH for both the American and National Leagues. And if you ask the Cubs, change isn't necessarily a bad thing. I think the Cubbies do pretty well, and we've shown we fare pretty well when we're able to have a DH. Man is on, and Schwarber pumping his fist down the first baseline. I think that gives us a lot of flexibility. I think it gives Rossi an extra added weapon. If uh, you know an expanded roster, like a 30-man roster, happens, obviously it's uh, a good situation for for guys who were in spots like I've been in the last few years. I think people are, you know, 20, 30 years from now, are going to look back on this year and say, "Oh, that was the beginning of when we started doing such and such." And, you know, maybe it's a chance uh, for some positive change. One thing has been clear during their time away from the game. The Cubs want to play in 2020. I'm looking forward to being around my teammates, competing, just go out there, play, and just let it, let it all hang out, be a kid. But I gotta be honest, you know, I'm, I'm gonna miss fans, which I feel like that's most likely gonna be the case. I think I'm going to find myself looking around more in the outfield and just taking in the beauty of the stadium. While the game may look different this season, the beauty of the ballpark is constant as ever, even if no one is currently there to see it, except for this man. You know, it's my own little private photo shoot. 
team photographer Stephen Green has had his lens trained on Wrigley Field since 1981. But he's never seen it quite like this. We never get this opportunity to shoot this place completely empty with nothing going on and nobody here. While players and fans are away from the game, Stephen has been documenting how the ballpark lives on in their absence. Whether it's the shadows creeping through the vacant grandstand. These, what I'm talking about, these shadows here and the railings. The grass in the unspoiled lawn. You see how rich this grass is? It's never been this deep. Or a puddle underneath empty seats by the foul line. Yeah, see, that's something I haven't seen before. Flagpole in the puddle. Wrigley Field looks different these days, but Stephen's primary focus has been on the ivy in the outfield. The project started out originally just to shoot the 400 sign once a week, just to show the progression of how the ivy would change. And then I started noticing how cool the ivy was growing in all over the place and how it looked different everywhere. While baseball has been dormant, the ivy has undergone its usual season of change. Like, when we started, it was like that, that bare spot right there. And, you know, one week the buds would come out, and then they had that, um, those purple berries that were on there. They're really cool, and then they bloom. And eventually, they just start merging and emerging and emerging, becoming this, this big, lush wall. It's almost here. As we learn to adapt to the disruptions in our lives, and yes, our baseball season, the ivy remains an enduring symbol that life does go on. And this, too, shall pass. This ivy, you think of all the things this ivy has been through and seen, and all the games that it's experienced. The players that have bounced off against that wall. You know, players that my parents would have seen, that, you know, uh, my kids in the future are going to come see. This ivy is going to outlast us. And it's just, it's just this continuity, this continuum that you feel connected to. There's a place, there's the players, and there's the game. And the place, to me, is, it's here forever. And I just, I never get tired of it. Just a little piece of ivy in the dirt, you know? <laughs>